Edmund Hillary. Sir Edmund Percival Hillary KGONCKBE, July 20, 1919, January 11, 2008, was a New Zealand mountaineer, explorer, and philanthropist. On May 29, 1953, Hillary and Nepalese Sherpa mountaineer Tenzing Norgay became the first climbers confirmed to have reached the summit of Mount Everest. They were part of the 9th British expedition to Everest, led by John Hunt. From 1985 to 1988 he served as New Zealand's High Commissioner to India and Bangladesh and concurrently as Ambassador to Nepal. Hillary became interested in mountaineering while in secondary school. He made his first major climb in 1939, reaching the summit of Mount Olivier. He served in the Royal New Zealand Air Force as a navigator during World War II. Prior to the Everest expedition, Hillary had been part of the British reconnaissance expedition to the mountain in 1951 as well as an unsuccessful attempt to climb Joo in 1952. As part of the Commonwealth Transantarctic Expedition he reached the South Pole over land in 1958. He subsequently reached the North Pole, making him the first person to reach both poles and summit Everest. Following his ascent of Everest, Hillary devoted himself to assisting the Sherpa people of Nepal through the Himalayan Trust, which he established. His efforts are credited with the construction of many schools and hospitals in Nepal. Hillary had numerous honors conferred upon him, including the Order of the Garter in 1995. Upon his death in 2008, he was given a state funeral in New Zealand. Early Life Hillary was born to Percival Augustus and Gertrude, née Clark, Hillary in Auckland, New Zealand, on July 20, 1919. His father Percy had served at Gallipoli with the 15th, North Auckland, Regiment, and was discharged medically unfit from the Army in 1916. He had married Gertrude after his return to New Zealand. His grandparents had emigrated from Yorkshire to northern Wairoa in the mid 19th century. His family moved to Tuakau, south of Auckland, in 1920, after Percy was allocated eight acres, three, dot two hectares, of land there as a return soldier. Percy had been a journalist pre war and soon became founding editor of the weekly Tuakau District News as well as an apiarist. Ed had a sister June, born 1917, and a brother Rex, born 1920. Hillary was educated at Tuakau Primary School and then Auckland Grammar School. He finished primary school aged 11 or 2 years early, and at grammar achieved average marks. His mother wanted him to go to a good school and he commuted by train cycling to Tuakau Station before 7 a.m. and returning after 6 p.m. for three and a half years, a one hour and 40 minutes journey each way, until the family moved to Remuera, Auckland in 1935, his last of four years at grammar. He was initially smaller than his peers and shy, and did not enjoy grammar, where commuting barred him from after-school activities. He grew to be 6 feet 2 inches, 188 centimeters, and gained confidence after taking up boxing. He became interested in climbing when he was 16 following a 1935 school trip to Mount Rapu, after which he showed more interest in tramping than in studying and said he wanted to see the world. He then attended Auckland University College, and joined the tramping club there. But in 1938 after two notably unsuccessful years studying mathematics and science he gave up on formal education. He then became an apiarist, beekeeper, with his father and brother Rex, with 1,600 hives to attend thousands of 90 pounds, 41 kilograms, boxes of honeycomb to handle, and 12 to 100 bee stings daily. So he kept bees in summer, and concentrated on climbing in winter. His father also edited the journal The NZ Honeybee and his mother Gertrude was famous for breeding and selling queen bees. In 1938 he went to hear Herbert Sutcliffe, the proponent of a life philosophy called Radiant Living, with his family. The family all became foundation members, and his mother became its secretary in 1939. He went to Gisborne as Sutcliffe's assistant, and in 1941 sat examinations to become a teacher of radiant living, getting a 100% pass mark. His test lecture was on inferiority, cause and cure. He said of his five-year association with the movement that I learned to speak confidently from the platform, to think more freely on important topics to mix more readily with a wide variety of people. Dot tenets included healthy eating, the salads that June took to university for lunch, and pacifism. He joined the Radiant Living Tramping Club, and further developed his love of the outdoors in the White Hockery Ranges. In 1939 he completed his first major climb, reaching the summit of Mount Olivier, near Aoraki, Mount Cook in the Southern Alps. 
climbing brought new friends, Harry Ayers and George Lowe became the first real friends I'd ever had. World War II At the outbreak of World War II, Hillary applied to join the Royal New Zealand Air Force RINSF, but quickly withdrew the application, later writing that he was harassed by my religious conscience. In 1943, with the Japanese threat in the Pacific and the arrival of conscription, he joined the RINSF as a navigator in No. 6 Squadron RINSF and later No. 5 Squadron RINSF on Catalina flying boats. In 1945, he was sent to Fiji and to the Solomon Islands, where he was badly burned in an accident. Expeditions In January 1948, Hillary and others ascended the south ridge of Aoraki, Mount Cook, New Zealand's highest peak. In 1951 he was part of a British reconnaissance expedition to Everest led by Eric Shipton, before joining the successful British attempt of 1953. In 1952, Hillary and George Lowe were part of the British team led by Shipton, that attempted Cho Oyu. After that attempt failed due to the lack of route from the Nepal side, Hillary and Lowe crossed the Nupla Pass into Tibet and reached the old Camp 2, on the northern side, where all the previous expeditions had camped. 1953 Everest Expedition In 1949, the long-standing climbing route to the summit of Everest was closed by Chinese-controlled Tibet. For the next several years, Nepal allowed only one or two expeditions per year. A Swiss expedition, in which Tenzing took part, attempted to reach the summit in 1952, but was forced back by bad weather around 800 feet 240 meters, below the summit. In 1952 Hillary learned that he and Lowe had been invited by the Joint Himalayan Committee for the 1953 British attempt and immediately accepted. Hunt wrote that Hillary's testing in the Himalayas had shown that he would be a very strong contender, not only for Everest, but for an eventual summit party. Dad, when I met Shipton last autumn I well remember his prophesying this, and how right he was. Quite exceptionally strong and abounding in a restless energy, possessed of a thrusting mind which swept away all unproven obstacles, Ed Hillary's personality had made an imprint on my mind, through his Cho Oyu and reconnaissance friends and through his letters to me. On the expedition, Hunt mentions several times discussing plans with Evans and Hillary. Shipton was named as leader but was replaced by Hunt. Hillary had objected but was immediately impressed by Hunt's energy and determination. Hillary had intended to climb with Lowe, but Hunt named two teams for the ascent, Tom Bordillon and Charles Evans, and Hillary and Tenzing. Hillary, therefore, made a concerted effort to forge a working friendship with Tenzing. The Hunt expedition totaled over 400 people, including 362 porters, 20 Sherpa guides, and 10,000 pounds, 4,500 kilograms, of baggage. Lowe supervised the preparation of the Lutze face, a huge and steep ice face, for climbing. Hillary forged a route through the treacherous Kumbu Icefall. The expedition set up base camp in March 1953 and, working slowly, set up its final camp at the South Kala 25,900 feet, 7,890 meters. On 26 May, Bordillon and Evans attempted the climb but turned back when Evans' oxygen system failed. The pair had reached the south summit, coming within 300 vertical feet, 91 meters, of the summit. Hunt then directed Hillary and Tenzing to attempt the summit. Snow and wind delayed them at the South Col for two days. They set out on 28 May with the support of Lowe, Alfred Gregory, and Ang Naima. The two pitched a tent at 27,900 feet, 8,500 meters, on 28 May, while their support group returned down the mountain. On the following morning Hillary discovered that his boots had frozen solid outside the tent. He spent two hours warming them over a stove before he and Tenzing, wearing 30-pound, 14-kilograms, packs, attempted the final ascent. The final obstacle was the 40-foot, 12-meters, rock face now called Hillary's step, Hillary later wrote. Tenzing later wrote that Hillary took the first step onto the summit and he followed. Dot they reached Everest 29,028 feet, 8,848 meters, summit, the highest point on Earth, at 11.30 a.m. They spent about 15 minutes at the summit. Hillary took a photo of Tenzing posing with his ice axe, but there is no photo of Hillary. BBC News attributed this to Tenzing's having never used a camera. Tenzing's autobiography says that Hillary simply declined to have his picture taken. They also took photos looking down the mountain. Tenzing left chocolates at the summit as an offering, and Hillary left a cross given to him by John Hunt. Their descent was complicated by drifting snow which had covered their tracks. The first person they met was Lowe, Hillary said, well, George, we knocked the bastard off. 
They returned to Kathmandu a few days later and learned that Hillary had already been appointed a Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire and Hunt a Knight Bachelor. News reached Britain on the day of Queen Elizabeth II's coronation, and the press called it a coronation gift. The 37 members of the party later received the Queen Elizabeth II coronation medal with Mount Everest expedition engraved along the rim. In addition to the knighting of Hillary and Hunt, Tenzing, ineligible for knighthood as a Nepalese citizen, received the George Medal. Tenzing also received the Star of Nepal from King Tribe Hoovan. After Everest, Hillary climbed 10 other peaks in the Himalayas on further visits in 1956, 1960-1961, and 1963-1965. He also reached the South Pole as part of the Commonwealth Transantarctic Expedition, for which he led the New Zealand section, on January 4, 1958. His party was the first to reach the pole overland since Amundsen in 1911 and Scott in 1912, and the first ever to do so using motor vehicles. In 1960 Hillary organized an expedition to search for the fabled abominable snowman. Hillary was with the expedition for five months, although it lasted for ten. No evidence of Yetis was found, instead footprints and tracks were proven to be from other causes. During the expedition, Hillary traveled to remote temples which contained Yeti scalps, however after bringing back three relics, two were shown to be from bears and one from a goat antelope. Hillary said after the expedition, the Yeti is not a strange, superhuman creature as has been imagined. We have found rational explanations for most Yeti phenomena. In 1960-61 he was accompanied by Griffith Pugh in the Silver Hut expedition, when Pugh showed that Mount Everest could be climbed without oxygen. An assault on Mukalu, the world's fifth highest mountain, was unsuccessful. In 1962 he was a guest on the television game show What's My Line? He stumped the panel, comprising Dorothy Colgallon, Arlene Francis, Bennett Cerf, and Merv Griffin. In 1977, he led a jet boat expedition, titled Ocean to Sky, from the mouth of the Ganges River to its source. From 1977 to 1979 he commentated aboard Antarctic sightseeing flights operated by Air New Zealand. In 1985, he accompanied Neil Armstrong in a small twin-engine ski plane over the Arctic Ocean and landed at the North Pole. Hillary thus became the first man to stand at both poles and on the summit of Everest. This accomplishment inspired generations of explorers to compete over what later was defined as Three Poles Challenge. In January 2007, Hillary traveled to Antarctica as part of a delegation commemorating the 50th anniversary of the founding of Scott Base. Public Recognition On June 6, 1953, Hillary was appointed Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire, and he received the Queen Elizabeth II Coronation Medal the same year. On February 6, 1987, he was the fourth appointee to the Order of New Zealand. He was also awarded the Polar Medal in 1958 for his part in the Commonwealth Transantarctic Expedition, the Order of Gorgadak Shinabahu, first class of the Kingdom of Nepal in 1953, and the Coronation Medal in 1975. On April 22, 1995 Hillary was appointed Knight Companion of the Most Noble Order of the Garter. On June 17, 2004 Hillary was awarded Commander's Cross of the Order of Merit of the Republic of Poland. The Government of India conferred on him its second highest civilian award, the Padma Vibhushan, posthumously, in 2008. To mark the 50th anniversary of the first successful ascent of Everest, the Nepalese government conferred honorary citizenship upon Hillary at a special Golden Jubilee celebration in Kathmandu, Nepal. He was the first foreign national to receive that honor. Since 1992, New Zealand's $5 note has featured Hillary's portrait, making him the only living person not a current head of state ever to appear on a New Zealand banknote. In giving his permission, Hillary insisted that Aoraki, Mount Cook rather than Mount Everest be used as the backdrop. Annual Reader's Digest polls from 2005 to 2007 named Hillary as New Zealand's most trusted individual. Hillary's favored New Zealand charity was the Sir Edmund Hillary Outdoor Pursuits Center, of which he was patron for 35 years. He was particularly keen on how this organization introduced young New Zealanders to the outdoors in a very similar way to his first experience of a school trip to Mount Rapu at the age of 16. A 2.3 meter, 7.5 feet, bronze statue of Hillary was erected outside the Hermitage Hotel at Mount Cook Village, it was unveiled by Hillary himself in 2003. Various streets, institutions and organizations around New Zealand and abroad are named after him. For example, the Sir Edmund Hillary Collegiate in Odora, which was established by Hillary in 2001. 
Two Antarctic features are named after Hillary. The Hillary Coast is a section of coastline south of Ross Island and north of the Shackleton Coast. The Hillary Canyon, an undersea feature in the Ross Sea, appears on the General Bathymetric Chart of the Oceans, published by the International Hydrographic Organization. Personal Life Hillary married Louise Mary Rose on September 3, 1953, soon after the ascent of Everest. He admitted he was terrified of proposing to her and relied on her mother to propose on his behalf. They had three children, Peter, born 1954, Sarah, born 1955, and Belinda, 1959 to 1975. In 1975 while en route to join Hillary in the village of Faflu, where he was helping to build a hospital, Louise and Belinda were killed in a plane crash near Kathmandu Airport shortly after takeoff. In 1989 he married June Mulgrew, the widow of his close friend Peter Mulgrew, who died on Air New Zealand Flight 901 in 1979. His son Peter Hillary also became a climber, summiting Everest in 1990. In May 2002 Peter climbed Everest as part of a 50th anniversary celebration, Jamling Tenzing Norge, son of Tenzing who had died in 1986, was also part of the expedition. Hillary's home for most of his life was a property on Remuera Road in Auckland City, where he enjoyed reading adventure and science fiction novels in his retirement. He also built a bock at Whites Beach, one of Auckland's west coast beaches in the former Waitakere City, between Anuata and North Piha, a friend called it Hillary's place of solace, where he could escape media attention. The Hillary family has had a connection with the west coast of Auckland since 1925, when Louise's father built a bock at Anuata. The family donated land at Whites Beach that is now crossed by trampers on the Hillary Trail, named for Edmund. Hillary said of the area, that is the thing that international travel brings home to me, it's always good to be going home. This is the only place I want to live in, this is the place I want to see out my days. Philanthropy Following his ascent of Everest he devoted himself to assisting the Sherpa people of Nepal through the Himalayan Trust, which he established in 1960 and led until his death in 2008. His efforts are credited with the construction of many schools and hospitals in this remote region of the Himalayas. He was the honorary president of the American Himalayan Foundation, a United States non-profit body that helps improve the ecology and living conditions in the Himalayas. He was also the honorary president of Mountain Wilderness, an international NGO dedicated to the worldwide protection of mountains. Political Involvement Hillary supported the Labour Party in the 1975 New Zealand general election, as a member of the Citizens for Rolling campaign. His involvement in this campaign was seen as precluding his nomination as Governor-General, the position was offered to Keith Holyoke in 1977. In 1985, Hillary was appointed New Zealand High Commissioner to India, concurrently High Commissioner to Bangladesh and Ambassador to Nepal, and spent four and a half years based in New Delhi. In 1975, Hillary served as a vice president for the Abortion Law Reform Association of New Zealand, a national pro-choice advocacy group. He was also a patron of Repeal, an organization seeking repeal of the Restrictive Contraception, Sterilization, and Abortion Act 1977. Death On April 22, 2007, while on a trip to Kathmandu, Hillary suffered a fall, and was hospitalized after returning to New Zealand. On January 11, 2008 he died of heart failure at Auckland City Hospital. Flags were lowered to half-mast on New Zealand public buildings and at Scott Base in Antarctica, and Prime Minister Helen Clark called Hillary's death a profound loss to New Zealand. On 21 January, Hillary's casket was taken into Holy Trinity Cathedral, Auckland, to lie in state. A state funeral was held on January 22, 2008, after which his body was cremated. On February 29, 2008 most of his ashes were scattered in Auckland's Hauraki Gulf per his desire. The remainder went to a Nepalese monastery near Everest, a plan to scatter them on the summit was cancelled in 2010. Posthumous Tributes In January 2008, Lukla Airport, in Lukla, Nepal, was renamed to Tenzing Hillary Airport in recognition of their promotion of its construction. On April 2, 2008, a service of thanksgiving in Hillary's honor at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle was attended by Queen Elizabeth II, New Zealand dignitaries including Prime Minister Helen Clark, and members of Hillary's and Norgay's families, Gurkha soldiers from Nepal stood guard outside the ceremony. In October 2008, it was announced that future rugby test matches between England and New Zealand would be played for the Hillary Shield. 
In 2009 the Duke of Edinburgh's award in New Zealand, formerly the Young New Zealanders Challenge, was renamed the Duke of Edinburgh's Hillary Award. On November 5, 2008, a commemorative set of five stamps was issued by New Zealand Post. There have been many calls for lasting tributes to Hillary. The first major public tribute has been by way of the Summits for Ed Tribute Tour organized by the Sir Edmund Hillary Foundation. This tribute tour went from Bluff at the bottom of the South Island to Cape Rianga at the tip of the North Island, visiting 39 towns and cities along the way. In each venue, school children and members of the public were invited to join together to climb a significant hill or site in their area to show their respect for Hillary. The public were also invited to bring small rocks or pebbles that had special significance to them, that would be included in a memorial to Hillary at the base of Mount Rapu, in the grounds of the Sir Edmund Hillary Outdoor Pursuits Center. Funds donated during the tour are used by the foundation to sponsor young New Zealanders on outdoor courses. Over 8,000 persons attended these summit climbs between March and May 2008. The tribute song Hillary 88, by the New Zealand duo The Kiwis, is the official world memorial song for Hillary, with the endorsement of Lady Hillary. A four-day track in the Waitakere Ranges, along Auckland's west coast, is named the Hillary Trail, in honor of Hillary. Hillary's father-in-law, Jim Rose, who had built a bucket at Anawata in 1925, wrote in his 1982 history of Anawata Beach, My family look forward to the time when we will be able to walk from Huia to Muriwai on public walking tracks like the old time Maori could do. Hillary loved the area, and had his own bach near Anawata. The track was opened on January 11, 2010, the second anniversary of Hillary's death. Rose Track, descending from Anawata Road to White's Beach, is named after the Rose family. The South Ridge of Aoraki, Mount Cook, New Zealand's highest mountain, was renamed Hillary Ridge on August 18, 2011. Hillary and three other climbers were the first party to successfully climb the ridge in 1948. In September 2013 the government of Nepal proposed naming a 7,681 meters 25,200 feet, mountain in Nepal Hillary Peak in his honor. After the New Horizons mission discovered a mountain range on Pluto on July 14, 2015, it was informally named Hillary Montes, Hillary Mountains, by NASA. The Sir Edmund Hillary Mountain Legacy Medal, awarded by the Nepalese NGO Mountain Legacy for remarkable service in the conservation of culture and nature in mountainous regions was inaugurated in 2003, with the approval of Sir Edmund Hillary. A bronze bust of Hillary, circa 1953, by Ophelia Gordon Bellis in the Te Papa Museum in Wellington, New Zealand. The Sir Edmund Hillary Archive was added to the UNESCO Memory of the World Archive in 2013. It is currently held by Auckland War Memorial Museum. Arms. Publications. Notes. Publications. Notes. Publications. Notes.